John William Waterhouse is one of those artists that for some reason appeals to many viewers around the world. What is his secret? Is it the wonderful stories he painted on the canvas like his story of Odysseus and the Sirens? Or this one of Echo and Narcissus? Or the beautiful and mysterious woman he painted? Like Circe? Ophelia? Or this woman in the Saw of the Rose? Or maybe it's the ideas that he captured on the canvas, like the concepts of the femme fatale or the story of a lost love. In this video we will hopefully figure out this a little bit more. And I will show you many of his stunning works, some well known, others not so much. And I would love to hear from you in the comment section down below, which work of Waterhouse is your favorite. Both parents of Waterhouse were artists and he got a very solid academic training as an artist in addition to the lessons of his parents. Until his early 30s he painted a variety of themes including mythological works like this painting of the water nymph Undyne when he was 23 years old and sleep and his half brother death. But he also painted other themes. For example here is his genre painting of two little Italian girls by a village. And these two works painted around age 30 are both entitled Dolce Farniente. They are very much in the style of Lawrence Elma Tadema, but over time he got more and more intrigued by the themes that the Pre-Raphaelites painted, drawn from mythology and other historical writings like Shakespeare. And whether it played a role in his choices or not, he was born in Rome, where he lived the first five years of his life, before returning to England. It is not unlikely that those experiences of his family caused his interest in Roman mythology. Around 1890, Waterhouse had discovered a beautiful model who features in many of his works from that time onwards. You can see her here in these two paintings as the model for Circe. And here in the role of Ophelia. As a siren. And the list goes on. Interestingly, the name of this model is not known today. And so we have to remind her as a muse that inspired some of Waterhouse's best works. Waterhouse captured his female models with great realism thanks to his rigorous academic training. But their beauty is not the only secret to Waterhouse's popularity. He was able to capture their characters better than most other artists. Look for example at this painting. If we don't know the story, we can probably guess that she is representing the femme fatale. Showing beauty on the one hand, but also the look of someone who is up to no good. And for clarity, this is the sorceress Circe, who is killing Scylla by pouring a magic potion into the sea that would turn Scylla into a monster. The reason for that? Scylla was in love with the same man as Circe. And here is a determined Penelope, who is not going to give in to the many suitors that want to take her away from Odysseus. And the curious Psyche opening the golden box. It's Waterhouse's ability to convey the type of person he painted instantly to the viewer. We often don't need to know the title or the full story to be interested in the work at first sight. Another explanation of Waterhouse's popularity is that he continued to improve his artistic skills during his career. Here's for example a relatively dull scene of the remorse of Nero after the murder of his mother when Waterhouse was in his late twenties. It does not come close to some of the works he painted later in his life. And his progress is perhaps even easier to see in some other works as he liked to paint certain subjects multiple times throughout his career. Here is for example a painting of Ophelia from 1889. Ophelia is a character from Shakespeare's drama Hamlet. He pictured her lying in a field 
and while he effectively integrated her into her environment, it is hard to see what emotions may be running through her head as her expression is quite neutral and out of focus. Five years later, in 1894, Waterhouse painted this version, showing her in the last moments before her death, seated on a willow branch extending out over a pond of lilies. The color contrast and context are stronger, though if you look at her face, it is still not clear that she is about to take her own life. Sixteen years later, in 1910, Waterhouse returned once more to Ophelia and this time he used brighter colors and a more direct composition to really capture her state of mind. Her desperate stare and reddened cheek convey the message that she is not in a good place. And her hand rests on the tree as to balance herself before she steps into the water. Waterhouse put a lot of efforts into each of his paintings and there are about 120 known paintings from his hands. Not only was he a bit of a perfectionist, he also typically painted large works taking more time to complete them, but he noticed that his larger works did better at exhibitions. I started this video with a question what it is that makes the paintings by Waterhouse appeal to so many people today. The beautiful woman, the deeper messages and his wonderful painting style are all factors. And in addition many people just love the themes that Waterhouse chose for his paintings. Especially the stories about intriguing women. We have already seen the sorceress Circe and the dramatic story of Ophelia. But there are many more. What about the Lady of the Shallot, who would die from a mysterious curse that she had to continually weave images on her loom without ever looking directly out at the world? Which went wrong as soon as she saw the beautiful Lancelot marching by her in the mirror. And then there are women like Cleopatra. The Enchantress Lamia who always got men in trouble. The fair Rosamond, the mistress of King Henry II of England. Various nymphs like Daphne, mermaids, Narcissus, Pandora and many more. The paintings by Waterhouse invite you to dive deeper into these intriguing stories from the Middle Ages, ancient mythology and 19th century poems. Obviously not everyone likes the works of Waterhouse. But I guess that if you made it this far into the video, you probably enjoy his works. And I'm curious to hear in the comment section down below what the reasons are that you enjoy the works of Waterhouse. And maybe it's a reason that I have not mentioned yet. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the art of John William Waterhouse. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.